Good evening. My name is Joseph Papeo. And I'm Emma Quinn. It is our honor to welcome you, our friends, our families, esteemed guests, and most especially, the visionary class of 2020 to this unique form of celebration. Our Fordham community is currently scattered around the world. But while we may be separated in a time of unprecedented change and uncertainty, this celebration reminds us that no matter where life may find us, we are united by our memories and experiences as Fordham students. From our first days admiring the skyline from McKeon Hall, or lighting our candles on eddies, we have been immersed in the very best of what a Jesuit education has to offer. Both in and out of the classroom, we have faced challenges, triumphs, good times and bad, with the conviction that we have the strength, skills, and most importantly, the bonds to shape the world. Our class, the Dodron's Bicentennial class, is made up of scholars, leaders, visionaries, problem solvers, and people for others. Hopefully, we will be reunited once more to celebrate our graduation before we make our mark on the wider world. While we are disappointed that we could not celebrate in person today, we invite you all to take this time to reflect with gratitude on our shared experiences and look forward to our future impact as boundary pushers and world changers. As we've heard so many times before, but need to hear now more than ever, let us all go out when it's safe and set the world on fire. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, with all my heart and from the bottom of my heart, I welcome you to this, the baccalaureate Eucharist that celebrates the many achievements of the class of 2020. You may know that this is the 175th baccalaureate Eucharist celebrated at the university. 
It is also the first baccalaureate Eucharist which has ever been celebrated remotely. Therefore, let me suggest something to you, if I might. I would ask you to consider your homes, which are made sacred by all the memories that you have in those homes. I would ask you to make those homes and see those homes as chapels of the University Church. And if you do so, let me thank you for welcoming us into your homes. Now, as we begin this Eucharist, I know I speak for Father McCarthy and Father Salazar when I tell you that we are honored, honored beyond words, to be able to celebrate this great occasion with you. And there is great reason for rejoicing. But today, as we gather, we celebrate the members of the class of 2020, the visionary class, the class of 2020, the Dodrin's Bicentennial class. You are a class that have enriched the university beyond measure with all the gifts that you brought with you when you arrived, gifts of curiosity, of love, friendship, and the great joy that you have in giving yourself to causes and to persons greater than yourselves. We gather to celebrate you. We gather to commend God in sending you to us. We gather to commend you and all your futures to the loving God who called you to be sons and daughters of Fordham. And now, my sisters and brothers, as we go more deeply into this Eucharist, let us pause and place ourselves in God's presence. And in God's presence, let us thank him for all the graces and blessings he has bestowed upon you, the members of the visionary class of 2020. And then let us ask him also for all the graces that you will need to serve him unselfishly all the days of your lives. You were sent to hear the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our faults and failings, and bring us at last to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us join our hearts and bow our heads in prayer. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate in joy may protect and save us with perpetual power. And grant this, we pray, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now to hear the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare and not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you look for me, you will find me. Yes. When you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, and I will change your lot. I will gather you together from all the nations and all the places to which I have banished you, and bring you back to the place from which I have exiled you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Shall make its bones 
let your faces not be abashed. The poor ones called, the Lord heard them and rescued them from all their distress. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. They are happy who seek A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if one has a grievance against another. As the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. This, my sisters and brothers, is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
First of all, I want to thank Father McShane for inviting me to join you in this baccalaureate mass and also for the honorary degree. I'm proud to be a member of the graduating class from this distinguished Jesuit university and also part of the Rand family. Another reason I'm proud to be a member of the class of 2020 is that, as you may know, my nephew Charles Buscarino is also part of your class. So I feel like I've been with you ever since your first week four years ago when I spoke with all of you in the Fordham Prep Auditorium. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, it was the last week of August. There was a lot going on for your first week and you were all nervous and quiet and shy and hardly talking to one another. In fact, I asked Dean Parmack, I said, why is everybody so quiet? And he said, well, no one knows one another and they're kind of afraid of saying something dumb or not cool. So I feel like I've been with you throughout these four years, starting all the way back in freshman year, as you navigated your way around campus and maybe visited Muggsy or Pugsley's for the first time, maybe splurged on a dinner, you know, once or twice or had your family take you out uh, on Arthur Avenue. And then in sophomore year, as you got more settled and felt maybe more comfortable exploring New York City a little bit more. And then in junior year, when maybe like my nephew, you spent some time abroad. And then this year, when you started to feel a little melancholy about leaving, until a few months ago when your plans changed dramatically. Your plans changed in a big way. So the first thing to say is that we need to admit disappointment and sadness over how the coronavirus has affected your senior year. And my mind turns to a phrase from a gospel passage we read in Sunday Mass just a few weeks ago called the road to Emmaus. In that reading from the Gospel of Luke, two of Jesus' disciples are leaving Jerusalem, dejected and despairing after the crucifixion and death of Jesus. And they utter what may be the saddest words in the whole New Testament, we had hoped. We had hoped, they say, that Jesus would be the Messiah. We had hoped that he would really be the one. We had hoped that things would go better. And I bet, I know, that you may have been thinking some version of those words in the last few weeks. We had hoped, we had hoped, we had hoped that we'd be able to say a real goodbye to some of our classmates. We had hoped that we would have an amazing and fun last semester. We had hoped that things would have been different for graduation. And it's okay to feel those feelings. They're natural, human, and real. Even Jesus' disciples felt that. But then in that gospel story, Jesus appears to them along the road to Emmaus and helps them see where they have been missing him. He helps them see where, in their sadness and confusion, they had overlooked God. And that's what today's readings help us to do, to notice God even amidst the sadness and confusion. That first reading from the book of Jeremiah is one of my favorites. Believe it or not, one of my friends has that verse tattooed on his arm, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare, not for harm, to give you a future with hope a future with hope. In other words, even amidst the sadness, confusion, and fear, God is on your side. When you think about your future right now, figuring out what to do, looking for a job, mapping out your life, remember that it's not just you struggling on your own. No, God is with you. Sometimes, I like this metaphor, it can feel like it's just you in a little rowboat in the midst of the great big sea, pulling on the oars by yourself. But that's not it at all. To continue the metaphor, God is right next to you in the boat, pulling on those oars in the same direction. Now you might say, well, you know, that's a nice thing to say, but how do I know that? Well, just look at the people who have helped you in the last few months, your family, teachers, friends. There are all ways that God has of helping you. God's plans for you are a future with hope, even in hard times. The second reading is also a help today. You know, in the midst of all this craziness, it's sometimes hard to know what to do. We have so many conflicting feelings. We might feel confusion, panic, despair. So how are we supposed to respond? Well, Paul's letters to the Colossians gives us a roadmap of what to do. Be humble, kind, patient. Paul even reminds us what the voice of God sounds like in these times. It's the voice of calm, hope, peace. That's the voice to listen to, not the voice of panic or despair. That's not God's voice. Listen to the voice of hopeful calm. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. That's great advice for any time. But Paul's letter reminds us that over all these things is something else, something we hear about in the gospel. 
directly from Jesus, love. Love one another as I have loved you, says Jesus. Now you know this already, and you've already done this over the last four years. You've loved Fordham, you've loved your classmates, you've loved, I hope, some of your classes and your professors. And you've been loved by the friends you met at Fordham, some of whom you'll know and love for the rest of your lives. Maybe you've even fallen in love at Fordham. So you know what love is. But in the last few weeks, you've seen a dramatic presentation of what a deeper love is. The sacrificing love that Jesus is talking about. Where have you seen that? Well, in the many doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who have offered themselves for the salvation of others, just like Jesus did during the pandemic. I can't think of a more moving illustration of what Jesus is talking about in today's gospel. Greater love has no person than the one who lays down his or her life for others. That's real love. The kind of love that typifies what all Jesuit students are called to be, men and women for others. Now, not all of you will be called to live out your love in that way, but this reading is no less important for you because the real message of your Jesuit education is just that, love. That's what it means to be a man or woman for others, a phrase you probably heard the first day you arrived on campus. It means to love. So if you remember nothing more from your four years at Fordham University, remember that. Being a person for others means to love, and that will never change. Because my fellow members of the class of 2020, this is a strange time to graduate, maybe the strangest in Fordham's long and distinguished history. But in the end, the fear, confusion, and panic that comes with the coronavirus is temporary. Those things pass away. Love is forever. My sisters and brothers, before we begin the prayers of the faithful, on your behalf, I would like to thank Father Martin for his characteristically excellent homily. Uh, he is, as you may know, not only a great writer, but he's a forceful preacher, and we just experience that now. Uh, it is his great joy, and he has told me it will always be a point of pride, that at the end of this Eucharist, he'll become an honorary member of your class as we bestow upon him an honorary doctoral degree. So thank you, Father Martin, for your extraordinary presence with us today. My dear sisters and brothers, filled with hope, inspired by the gospel, and strengthened by the faith that we profess, let us bring our prayers now to God, our loving Father. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to empower her in the pursuit of serving the poor as a community of hospitality, reconciliation, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders and candidates, guided by the Holy Spirit, may they lead with humility and wisdom. And for members of the public, may we set aside our differences as we work together to promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the class of 2020, May we be united from our diverse backgrounds, gifts, and vocations as we use our education to serve others, standing in solidarity with the oppressed, discerning what is right, and courageously seeking justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healthcare workers and graduates preparing for careers in healthcare, for essential workers caring for our communities, and for all those struggling with loneliness and financial insecurity. May they be protected by God's loving care and sustained by our support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have supported the class of 2020 in our studies and endeavors, may they know our thankfulness for all they have given us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially all impacted by COVID-19, and for all the loved ones of the class of 2020. May the perpetual light of God shine eternally upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, you have blessed us richly with your loving kindness and your wisdom. Our petitions speak of our desire to become who you have called us to be and to glorify you in all we do. We ask that you grant our prayers through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. My sisters and brothers, please pray that our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make us an eternal offering to you. And grant this, we pray, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, filled with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising to the setting of the sun of your sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My sisters and brothers, the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our Father Ignatius and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and his brother bishops, and all the women and men whom you have called to serve your people, the Church. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be, be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead, lead us, us not into temptation. temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And now, my sisters and brothers, in the chapels of your own home, please share with one another the gift of God's own peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but only, only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore keep his feast. in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Yeah. 
and let us pray. We are partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. And grant this, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening. I am Eleanor Rodriguez from the class of 2020 at Rose Hill. From the very beginning, we were never simply going to be the class of 2020, but rather the visionaries going down in Fordham's history as the Dodron Bicentennial graduating class of our school. Since our first day freshman year, we have shared a lot of history-making moments. Some will be remembered throughout the world, like the 2016 election, Meghan Markle becoming and unbecoming a royal, the Me Too movement, the March for Our Lives, and the US women's soccer team winning the World Cup and fighting for equal pay. Other moments will simply remain as a part of the history of the class of 2020. We will remember Blue Goose closing, Starbucks opening, McGinley construction, the heartbreaking loss of fellow Rams, standing with our Dreamer classmates, winning the Ram Crusader Cup at Yankee Stadium, and hearing inspiring speakers like Angela Davis on campus. We've seen a lot of changes, experienced losses great and small, and celebrated many victories. As a Fordham retreat leader, I saw how many of these moments deeply transformed our class. I had the privilege of witnessing many of our classmates find their bravest, most authentic selves throughout these times. Whether you attended a retreat or not during your time at Fordham, I believe we all encountered God every single day these past four years in the faces of the people around us. Through these encounters, we were becoming the men and women for others that we came to Fordham striving to be. We became faithful friends, courageous thinkers, compassionate leaders, daring activists, and extraordinary classmates. Even as the visionary Dodrins, I don't think any of us envisioned Fordham's 175th graduation ceremony under these circumstances. Expected or not, we have proven ourselves brave enough to face the unknown and loving enough to do it together. As we approach yet another change and journey further into the unknown, it is my greatest hope that we can go forth in the world as our most brave and authentic selves to lead the world in more history-making moments as men and women for others. We may now be remembered to the world as the Corona class of 2020, but to me, we are the faithful, courageous, compassionate, daring, extraordinary, visionary Dodrin Bicentennial class of 2020. Congratulations, and I can't wait to see you soon. Hello all, my name is Haley Williams, and while at FCLC, I've been involved with many activities, mostly ministry and dance related. None of those mean much right now. Uh, none of the things I poured myself into, sought direction, belonging, and self-worth in, have any power to change my present situation. Stuck at home, under my parents' roofs, living basically by the same rules that I did in high school. Though scattered, we are experiencing different outcomes of the same loss. Forced to leave our friends, our freedom, and our best laid plans in our beloved city. Condemned to never-ending Zoom calls, while our attention is jostled between professors, families, roommates. Our performances, our travels, our senior week, our commencement, gone. I'd be lying if I said I was brokenhearted for us compared to all that's happening in the world. These days in quarantine have made me apathetic and complacent. My days lack focus and structure. Most of the time, I achieve very little. My actions seem to impact little outside of my own home. After four years at Fordham, what did I gain? Where is my purpose in this? Father McShane has one word that rebukes me in my sloth and indifference. Fordham students will leave being bothered. Simple, yes, but this is the most valuable lesson I learned in college. 
We harden so we can live our lives and not be hurt by the overwhelming amount of trouble we experience. New York has tempted me to armor myself, use my subway face as shields. Fordham challenged me to pursue peace. I often ignored the suffering of strangers in my daily grind. Fordham asked me to be a woman for others. I could not be a Fordham student and be numb to the needs of my city, my community. I may not be able to name every Jesuit tenant, but in my four years, they have been pressed onto my heart. With all the hurt and disappointment and loss plaguing our world, I cannot let myself be unbothered by it. We cannot let ourselves be unbothered. As long as we are present to the suffering of others in our common home, we will have meaningful work and purpose. We have reason to get out of bed. There are people to care for. There's work to be done. Unless we start doing for the sake of giving rather than receiving, we will continue to live in a world of scarcity. My hope for the class of 2020, the visionary class, is that we would take this time to imagine a world of abundance. In doing so, we'll have much to do to bring our reality closer to our vision. If Fordham taught me anything, it's that this world needs us to be bothered. It needs us to ask the questions of how we can create a more sustainable, innovative, and generous culture. How can we be stewards of compassion to our spheres of influence? 2020, this world needs our talent, creativity, soft hearts, sharp minds. It needs our hope. You may recall that a few moments ago, I mentioned that Father Martin, who was our preacher for this baccalaureate Eucharist, was going to receive a Doctor of Humane Letters degree from the university at the end of the Eucharist, and that moment has come. So I've asked Father McCarthy if he would read the degree citation uh, for Father, uh, Father Martin, and I'm also going to ask Father Salazar to bring uh, the hood and the diploma over to the altar so that we can bestow this honorary degree upon our dear friend, Father Martin, who, by the way, has been longing all his life to become a member of the Fordham family. This is a dream come true for him. So keep that in mind as we do this. James Martin of the Society of Jesus. Whether he's penning insightful essays about Pope Francis, swapping stories on camera with Stephen Colbert, or welcoming first-year students to Fordham and other universities around the country, Father James Martin of the Society of Jesus experiences faith with the open-wide wonder of a pilgrim and celebrates it with the soul-wise erudition of a poet. Called to his vocation by St. Jude and Thomas Merton, Father Martin entered the Society of Jesus in 1988 after growing dissatisfied with a career on the executive track at General Electric. He began his novitiate serving the infirm in Kingston, Jamaica, and underrepresented youth on New York City's Lower East Side. After working with the Jesuit Refugee Service in Nairobi, Kenya, he joined the editorial staff of America Magazine, where he practiced and, over time, perfected the pastoral compassion and spiritual contemplation that define his work today. Widely considered one of the most influential religion writers of our time, Father Martin, who was ordained a Catholic priest in 1999, has written extensively about faith in mainstream and Catholic publications. A trusted and measured voice amid increasing distraction and divisiveness, he is a frequent commenter on networks as diverse as MSNBC and Fox News, NPR and the Vatican Radio, and on social media. If it were not beneath the Son of Man to speak plainly to people, he once said, it should not be beneath us. If Jesus could talk about the birds of the air, we can tweet. An editor-at-large in America, he is the best-selling author of more than a dozen books, including Jesus, A Pilgrimage, The Jesuit Guide to Almost Everything, 
between heaven and mirth, my life with the saints, and building a bridge which Cardinal Kevin Farrell, Prefect of the Vatican's Dicastery for Laity, Family, and Life, hailed as a welcome and much needed book that will help all church leaders more compassionately minister to the LGBT community. A spiritual counselor for artists and comedians, politicians and priests, executives and undergraduates alike, Father Martin has been a champion for a consistent ethic of life. He encourages his fellow pilgrims to consider our faith and our world more deeply, to remain at all times most fully ourselves, and to recognize God in everyone and in everything, wherever we are or whoever we may be, surrounded always by laughter and love and the promise of light. For his continued ministry to people in power and on the margins, and his manifest commitment to prophetic witness, both in action and on the page, we, the President and Trustees of Fordham University, in solemn convocation and assembled, and in accord with the chartered authority bestowed upon us by the Regents of the University of the State of New York, declare Father James Martin of the Society of Jesus, Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa, and that he may enjoy all the rights and privileges of this, our highest honor, we have issued these letters patent under our hand and under the corporate seal of the university on this, the 16th day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2020. Father Martin, welcome to the Fordham family. This is Father Martin's diploma. And this is the doctoral hood that he will wear with pride, humble Jesuit pride, for the rest of his life. I want to thank Father McShane and the Board of Trustees of Fordham University for this great honor, which I am accepting virtually, as you can see. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to be uh, officially a member of the Fordham community, and also by tradition, a member of the class of 2020, which includes my nephew, Charles. Uh, for all of you members of the class of 2020, congratulations, and I will see you at our 50th reunion uh, when you will be 71 and I will be 109, so try to speak up. Uh, but more seriously, truly, uh, thank you to Father McShane and the Board of Trustees uh, for this great honor. Uh, and in the words of a famous saint, go Rams. And now, my sisters and brothers, we come to the blessing of the graduates and the blessing of the congregation and the sending out into the world. I'm going to ask Father Salazar and Father McCarthy to stand on either sides of the altar so that they can join me uh, in the bestowal of this blessing. And in the, in the silence, the quiet, or the chaotic joy of your homes, which are now chapels, extensions of the university church, I would ask our graduates, the members of the class of 2020, the visionary class, the Dodrons bicentennial class, to please stand as we pray for you and ask God our Lord to bless you. God has created each of you to do some definite service. He has committed some work to you that he has not committed to another. You may not know your mission completely now, but we pray that you will know it in the fullness of time. You are a part of God's great work. You are a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. You are called to do good. You are called to do God's work. You are called to be angels of peace and preachers of truth in your own place. And you are called to keep his commandments and to serve him in all things. Therefore, my sisters and brothers, as you go forth from Fordham, trust in the Lord and do not be afraid. I would now like to ask the parents of our graduates to stand and join me in blessing the graduates by placing your hands on their shoulders as a sign of blessing. At the same time, I will ask Father McCarthy and Father Salazar to raise their hands in blessing as well. Lord, bless our graduates and be with them always. Let them shine as a light for others. Let them praise you in the way that you love best, 
by giving of themselves. Spread light and love through them and with them. Teach them always to show forth your praise, your truth, and your will. Teach them to, pray, to preach your love without preaching, not by words, but by example, and by their visible resemblance to your saints and the evident fullness of the love that their hearts have for you. Make them always men and women for others, that through their lives and their example, they might transform the world and build your kingdom, the kingdom of justice, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of peace here in our midst. And now I invite the whole congregation to stand, all your siblings, your grandparents, everyone who has joined you at home for this celebration. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage and hold fast to the truth. Return no one evil for evil. Rather, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak. Help the afflicted, love and serve one another, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, our Eucharist together is ended. Let us go forth now in peace and joy to serve the Lord and his people, the church. Thanks be to God. To the members of the class of 2020, congratulations. I look forward to celebrating another baccalaureate Eucharist with you and for you in the fall.